and the pharaoh had to be male, so she had herself depicted with a male body, a male kilt, and the false beard of a pharaoh on her chin. Hatshepsut had to carefully choose who to trust at court. Hatshepsut is a woman trying to be a king. She inherited a court from her father, but she replaces them with people that she herself has chosen. And it's in their interests to keep their patron, even if that patron is a woman, in place. They know that if she goes, they go. One of the pharaoh's favorite courtiers was a man named Senenmut. He had started life as a commoner, but his rise to power had been meteoric, sparking rumors about the nature of his relationship with Hatshepsut. Senenmut was promoted from the army to the royal household. Hatshepsut even entrusted him with raising her own daughter. But it was as her chief architect that Senenmut did the most for his pharaoh. He had been responsible for the creation of Hatshepsut's giant obelisks. Now she entrusted him with her most ambitious plan. The building of her mortuary temple. The temple would be Hatshepsut's ultimate attempt to prove herself worthy of the title of Pharaoh. It was one of the most lavish and monumental buildings of the ancient world. Deir el Bahri. Below the great temple, an additional tomb had been carved out of the rock. Halfway down the corridor, is a drawing of the owner of the tomb, and next to it, a name, Senenmut. The tomb's position, so close to Hatshepsut's temple, may simply have been the ultimate reward for a loyal architect. But perhaps, it was a reflection of the intimacy between Hatshepsut and her favorite courtier. There was speculation at the time that Senemu was Hatshepsut's lover and a series of graffiti in a tomb near the temple of Deir el-Bahri make it fairly clear that the person who wrote the graffiti thought that that was what they were up to. This is a problem that female rulers tend to get. They pick up salacious views of what they're doing. I suspect that's unlikely. It's too dangerous a game for Senemu to be playing. I suspect the relationship was one of mutual respect and not going beyond the boundaries of that respect. But while the inner temple harbored private secrets, the outer walls of Deir el Bahri became a place for propaganda and self-aggrandizement. Carved reliefs boast the crowning achievement of her reign. An unusual and bold military adventure. Every pharaoh was expected to prove himself on the battlefield, but Hatshepsut's army was under the control of her stepson, Tuthmosis. Tuthmosis was acutely aware that the throne was rightfully his. Like Elizabeth I of England, she doesn't trust the army. She's got a problem. If she sends the army out to extend the empire, if it loses, she will be blamed and will almost certainly lose power. What happens, on the other hand, if it wins? The generals in charge of the victorious army are likely to turn round and say, see, we can achieve victory, we don't need this queen upstart on the throne. So, Tuthmosis and his army represents a major problem for Hatshepsut. The pharaoh devised an ingenious plan that would not only keep Tuthmosis and his army occupied, but would also enhance her status. She commanded her soldiers to prepare for an epic trading mission to a place where no Egyptian had been for over 500 years, the land of Punt. As well as keeping her stepson busy, Punt offered Hatshepsut 
the promise of exotic goods. Above all, incense. Incense was a very important part of Egypt's foreign relations. The Egyptians valued incense tremendously. The elite liked to perfume their environments. But even more importantly, when you released incense in a temple, the god or the goddess actually embodied themselves in the incense. So what you were smelling wasn't just the incense, it was the aroma of the deity. In the ninth year of her reign, the pharaoh launched the expedition to Punt, an epic quest for the rarest treasures of the ancient world. Stage management was the essence of this trip. It was a huge piece of theatre. It was a huge piece of propaganda to show that Hatshepsut can deliver the exotic, the unusual, the divine. It also creates work for an unemployed army. It's a feat that they can talk about to their grandchildren, that they can say we did under the famous Queen Hatshepsut. of Hatshepsut's temple proclaimed the mission to have been a triumphant success. The reliefs depict the exotic treasures her soldiers brought back to her. Look, they are 